From the very beginning, Fatal Frame 5 started life as a game where you, the protagonist, would visit various paranormal hotspots to bring people back who have been spirited away. As you may have gathered from this channel, these hotspots are generally places like mountains, forests, tunnels, and bodies of water. And although it takes place on the fictional mountain, Mount Hikami, the game took inspiration from many real-life locations. So, this week, we're going to take a look at a few of the real locations around Japan that helped shape Mount Hikami into the terrifying place it is in-game. Let's head on in. Perhaps the most immediately obvious location that most people will recognize is the unfathomable forest on Mount Hikami that has, in recent years, become especially synonymous with suicide and ghost hunters. This was, of course, influenced by the real-life sea of trees that can be found on Mount Fuji. The scale is obviously much smaller, but in-game, the forest has become a hotspot of ghost activity because of the massive number of people who visit it to end their lives. There's also an extensive cave and tunnel system under the forest, just like in real life. This is, however, perhaps the most loosely influenced location and, unlike real life, the forest in-game is surrounded by a fence in an attempt to keep people out. Not that it does, of course. Where there's a will, there's a way. Another location that may be less obvious to people outside of Japan is the Shadow Spring, or as it's known in Japanese, the Black Lake. This is where the final fight of the game takes place, and visually it's a rather striking location. As it turns out, this was also based on a very real location, and you can find this same rock formation called Hashigui Iwa Rocks in Wakayama Prefecture. You can head into Google Maps and check them out for yourself, and it's easy to see why these striking rocks inspired Shibata to include them in perhaps the game's most significant location. He wanted the Shadow Spring to look like the edge of the world, the gate to hell itself, and if you ask me, it worked perfectly. Staying in Wakayama, although the designs are very different, you can also find a shrine of dolls similar to the one in-game, called Awashima Shrine. These dolls are generally given to the shrine by women praying for things like fertility and childbirth. One infamous doll there is even said to have hair that continually grows, much like the Okiku doll in Hokkaido. But unlike the real shrine, the dolls in the Shrine of Dolls in-game are said to be effigies or offerings that represent children who have died, and the shrine itself attracts a large number of child spirits. While the cable car in the game isn't specifically based on one particular location, Shibata did apparently include a real-life experience of his in the game, which influenced the cable car as we see it. He reportedly visited Mount Koya, which is also in Wakayama, and is considered one of Japan's three most foremost sacred mountains. And on that mountain, you can also find a cable car. Shibata recounted a tale in which he fell asleep on the car, and then woke up when the announcement proclaimed that they had reached the final spot. In a daze, Shibata ran off the car, only to find an abandoned station and a rainy forest off to the side. He was naturally confused and frightened, but it turned out the PA system had, in all likelihood, malfunctioned, and the driver thankfully waited for him to return. The station itself was empty and no longer used, but the experience was so odd that Shibata decided to use that same situation in the game. When using the cable car, you'll get off at an empty station surrounded by a rainy forest, just like Shibata did that day. And Mount Koya isn't the only sacred mountain to have influenced Mount Hikami either. Mount Osode, which can be found in Aomori Prefecture, the Tohoku region, which is roughly the same area where the game takes place, also played a large role in visually shaping the mountain. The real Mount Osode is considered to be one of the gates to the underworld in Japanese mythology, just like Mount Hikami is and the Twilight Peak and Lake of the Departed in particular bear a striking resemblance to Mount Osode. The Lake of the Departed looks much like Lake Usori and its sandy banks, and at Bodaiji Temple on the way to the lake, you can find numerous colourful windmills, 
just like you can find at the Twilight Peak on the way to the Lake of the Departed. These windmills, or pinwheels, represent the cycle of reincarnation and are also said to bring happiness and good luck. Bodaiji Temple is also the home of numerous blind female shamans known as Itako. These Itako go through rigorous training to communicate with the dead and generally start at a young age by constantly exposing their body to ice-cold water. Sound familiar? Although Fatal Frame 5 shrine maidens are not blind, they do cover their eyes until they are ready to glance someone's final moments, and their training also involves copious amounts of water, so these real women undoubtedly played a small part in their creation as well. Finally, although not based on a real location, the Watarai residence in game is referred to as a Mayoiga, which comes from folklore in the Tohoku region, Iwate Prefecture in particular. You can find the most famous tale of a Mayoiga, a house that appears and disappears, in Tonomonogatari by Yanigita Kunio. Although not specifically a real location, I think this one is especially interesting and worth including here as well. And that is some of the real-life locations that helped inspire Mount Hikami for Fatal Frame 5. Naturally, creative liberties are often taken, and sometimes it's nothing more than a pure visual or even an idea that's taken and adapted into something else entirely. But what do you guys think about this one? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.